Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make rugs or carpets, I don't really know what the difference is, in two different ways. So we're going to be using particle hair system and also the new geometry nodes hair system. So just two different approaches to achieve the same thing. Enough rambling, how do we make a uh, carpet or a rug? I'm going to start off with a plane, although you can have your rug be any shape. So here I'm making my rug kind of be like this nice uh, square. Uh, you can have it be any shape. Uh, the first method, kind of the easier one, is you're going to go to particles, you're going to add a particle system, which is going to add particles, but you're going to set this to hair, which adds all these strands. Uh, take the hair length and bring it down so that it's just barely above the plane, because, you know, rugs and carpets don't have... I think a rug is what I'm doing, because it has, like, strands and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't go that far off the surface. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, we need to increase the number of these so it's higher. No, uh, to add more hair, all we have to do is go to children and enable interpolated. And this is going to interpolate, it's going to generate new hair strands in between the existing ones in a computationally uh, effective way, cheap. Uh, so I'm just gonna increase this to 100. Uh, you have a display mount and a render mount, so you can have the display mount be a bit less so it's a bit lighter on render but I'm just, or on the viewport, uh, but I'm just gonna keep it at 100. So now you can see we have more particles, and if we were to actually go to rendered mode and kind of light this thing, and I think this is the kind of thing that's easier to see with cycles, uh, you're gonna see we kind of get the basis of a rug. Now, it doesn't look great, of course, and that's because it's like perfectly uniform, uh, so let's fix that. So in the particle hair stuff, uh, we have all these settings we have uh, for the uh, children, which you do want to add, because when you do that, uh, you get to mess with the parting, the clumping, the roughness, yada yada. Long story short, you're going to take the roughness and increase this uniform value, which you're going to see uh, add some distortion, okay? Uh, you can pick how much distortion you want that to be and at what scale you want that to be in. So I'm just going to keep it at like 0.5 and a uniform of, um, of 0.03. And you can see this immediately looks more like lived in, right? Like it actually has like, you know, some patches that are, have different lighting. So that's part one. Uh, part two, and you can go through all these, is I'm going to add a bit of clumping. What clumping is, I'm going to increase it, is it takes uh, nearby hair strands and brings them close the uh, children, it's gonna bring them close to the original hair strands, I think, so what's happening under the hood. Uh, so if we take the clumping and just bring it up a tiny bit, I feel like that makes it look more realistic. So here's the before, and here is the after. I think it just adds a little something. Now you can go through this and also mess with the uh, kink, which has all kinds of settings, like a uh, curl, yada yada. Uh, I'm going to not do that, because I'm happy with how this looks. And let me just show you how to apply a material. So in the shading workspace, we go to rendered mode. You can either make a, a hair material or more simply, if you use the principled BSDF, it's gonna automatically color your hair and the plane that it is uh, resting on. So it's gonna do both. Um, what you might wanna do <laughs> is you might wanna put a uh, design on this. So I'm just gonna use a checker texture, for example. Uh, you can see uh, when we load in a checker texture, it's going to actually import onto those hairs. So you can do this as an image, so you can get a design of a rug or a carpet or whatever. And I believe if you wanted to separate uh, the hair from the plane, I believe it's called uh, curve info, curves info, uh, which has a lot of settings. The one we care about is this is strand, uh, which is going to make the hair white and the plane, a little hard to see, uh, it's going to make it black. And then you can actually have two different BSDFs and mix them together. Uh, but for our purposes, we're going to keep it nice and simple. So that is the first method. And it turns out that there is another method that is arguably more powerful and pretty much just as fast. But this is a good way to do it. Um, another way you can do it is you can add a plane. Or again, you can have this be like a curved surface, whatever. You're going to Shift A and we are going to add a curve. And I know you don't have all these curves, but what you are going to have is this fur option. So you can either use empty hair or fur. I like fur because it has a lot of settings already uh, brought in. And you can kind of tell uh, that this generates a hair system. And what's happening under the hood is you can see it adds all these modifiers, each of which is a geometry node setup. So if I go here, you can see some geometry nodes and more. It gets pretty convoluted here. It's uh, node groups within node groups. Uh, but all we care about is the control we get uh, using these uh, settings here. Okay, 
Uh, so the first thing you might want to play with is the radius, like how thick these strands are. You can see it's not doing anything. Uh, this is because, fancy little setting, inside of curves you want to, in viewport display, is you want to set this to strip instead of strand. And I believe now if we increase the radius, yes, it increases the uh, viewport radius so we can actually see what's going on here. Um, so you have a bunch of settings here. The one we care about is, again, this interpolation. Uh, so you can take the density of it and bring it up, which will generate more uh, hair in general. And you could um, bring that up and you can have it be less visible in the viewport, even though it will have more on render. So same kind of idea. And then uh, just like before, we have like all these settings for distortion. In this case, we're using noise. Uh, so kind of the easy way to think about this is you can just bring down the noise and then you could try to add uh, different kinds of modifiers. We already have a couple like uh, frizz. That's just going to add some uh, extra stuff. And uh, by the way, if you wanted to add more uh, geometry node stuff in here, uh, there's a bunch of hair settings uh, that do a whole bunch of different things. So for deformation, we can not only frizz hair, but we can roll it, rotate, a whole bunch of stuff. But that's a bit too complicated uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm trying to think uh, what else you might want to know about this. Probably how to make the hair shorter. Uh, so unlike in the hair particles, we don't have a slider for like how tall the hair is. And that's because what's happening under the hood is we have a couple curves here, and it's going to use those to generate the, uh, the rest. So if I modify some of these curves, you can see I can like draw what this carpet's going to look like. So in general, if I select all these curves and scale down to the 3D cursor on the Z axis, you can see effectively uh, that makes this uh, shorter. But again, you have much more control here than you had with them. Um, with a um, the particle info. So you can do all kinds of distortions here. Although I believe it works a bit better when we do it individually. Uh, just like before, we can apply a material to this. So I'm gonna go to the shading workspace. Uh, you're gonna see by default, uh, we actually get a fur material in addition to our original material. So here it's actually separated the fur from the plane that it's on. There's two separate objects, as you can see. Uh, so in the fur material, uh, you can just click use nodes, which is going to let us use nodes. And now uh, the hair is one color and the plane is another question mark. Let's see. Yes. So now you can have these be uh, two different colors, as you can see, two different materials. And uh, what you might also want to know is, yes, we can map uh, textures onto here. So you can, uh, just like in the uh, hair stuff, you can uh, do the thing. And uh, kind of final note on this is instead of a principled BSDF, you might be tempted to use a, a principled hair BSDF, which is fine. Um, this is just kind of like if you're doing hair that's on your head and stuff like that, because then we can control like the melanin. Here we go, melanin concentration. So you can either have white hair or black hair or somewhere in between. So this is kind of the gradient of hair as you age in some sense. Uh, but you can do all that. So I just wanted to show you two different methods, two different powerful methods in their own respect for uh, making carpets and rugs and hair in general. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Check out Patreon, by the way, if you want to get a bunch of project files and stuff like that.